Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction and all its often absurd comedy to you, the viewer. Except today is anything but that. There is no love or whimsical fancy here, oh no. Only a burning hatred for the stupidest, ugliest, most nonsensically terrible ship I have ever seen put to screen in any science fiction product, maybe ever. I hate this thing so much, I think it's a genuine insult to the artistry and style of what came before, and would go so far as to say it's the spaceship version of Ed Gein, wearing the faces and names of innocents that really didn't deserve it. God, I despise this thing. If it wasn't abundantly obvious, today we are going to be going over my least favorite ship. The one that I hate the most and that brings nothing but salty tears of nerd rage to my eyes. But before we get into the video proper, the topic was suggested by a patron and I couldn't not make a video on it. If you'd like to support Psy, get our content a day early, and occasionally have a hand in what videos get made, check out the link in the description and pinned comment below. If space bucks are short, then like, sub, and share the video around since every little bit helps. And with that, Time for the normally lovable, fast-talking, sci-fi funny man to be very angry. This ship is a disaster. For those who don't know, this abomination, this insult against creation itself, is the Narada from Star Trek, the 2009 reboot by good old Jar Jar Abrams, the man having gone on to ruin further sci-fi properties after he was done dragging Star Trek through the mud. I'm not a fan, if you could tell. Now, I could and very much want to just sit here and scream insults and unholy curses at this ship and the director that approved it for half an hour, but these videos are meant to be shorter and funnier. So instead, I'm going to throw a library at you. Or, I guess a single book from it. The Space Ships for Dipshits, a guide to visual design. Starting out with visual clarity, because by the old gods, what am I looking at? Every time this thing shows up on screen, it is a roiling mess of pointy spikes, blurred and hard to see gradients of black, blackish blue and blackish green highlights on a black background, or slight movements that turn this porcupine wannabe into a kaleidoscope of moving greebly bits. It also has the problem of being so overbloated and complicated that it has no silhouette. Every angle you look at this ship from changes its profile, and that sounds stupid and obvious, but hear me out. The Narada is a rough ovoid shape, but viewed from the front it looks like a furball. Like, what is this? Compare it to literally any other ship from more standard Trek, and almost any angle you can see, yeah, that's a Federation ship. Or yeah, that's a Klingon battlecruiser. Or the most cheat example, yeah, that's a Borg cube. Every angle I'm looking at it from, it's a cube. This, the Narada, is awful. It's not only difficult to parse on screen, but because of its chaotic and tubular design, it's almost impossible to tell what the ship is doing. Is it moving? Is it turning? Is it inverting itself? I don't know. To me, this thing looks like it's vibrating on screen at all times. And I am convinced the CGI team and director agree with me because the Narada never moves. The entire movie, every single time the Narada is shown, it's stationary or moves a tiny little bit. Like jumping to warp from a stationary camera angle or emerging from a tear in reality. I would also argue it fails at the two things it was supposed to do. First, being intimidating, and second, looking like a Lovecraftian monster. The image of this thing's prongs ripping out of this alien hole in reality is genuinely really cool. But in my tinfoil hat conspiracy, that's the entire purpose of the ship. To look really menacing emerging out of reality's ass and then... that's it. It's as far as anyone thought before slapping it into the film. Weird space entities like crystalline monsters exist as well, so I would argue is done so much better by the actual crystalline entity that we see in other Star Trek episodes. Overall, the visuals of the Narada are just so bad on screen. They look terrible, they're messy, it's just an absolute disaster. And this leads into point two, 
of the spaceships for Dipshit's Guide to Visual Design, displaying the qualities and characteristics of its crew and creators in a visual form. The Federation is graceful and calm, it's peaceful and smooth, any rough edges have, according to them, long since been polished down. They're the sparkly, clean, plucky future utopia and its ships represent that. They're smooth and made of big but simple and elegant shapes, looking as much like a piece of art as they do an actual ship not really intimidating or threatening at all. Compared to the Borg, utterly inhuman, cold, unfeeling, there is no value given to worthless concepts like aesthetic or form, geometric function with absolute focus on purpose and the ability to execute it. The Borg cube is the antithesis of everything that Star Trek science fiction is. It's a hopeless thing. They simply are like a force of nature. And you know what? Sure, let's get artsy with it, why not? The Narada's spiky and chaotic design represents the fragmented and grief-tortured mind of its captain and crew as they struggle. Look, it's, it's all BS, we all know it, okay? The Romulans exist. There is a design history to pull from, so any justification for the Narada is completely swept away by that. And the old Romulan designs are just so much better in every way. Look at this little warbird. Now look at this heavy warbird. Now look at this battleship and this super weapon. Romulan design is so good. They are a cold, brutal people obsessed with not only order and power and prestige, but the appearance of those things. They want their visage to strike fear as much as their weapons do. So Romulan ships are elegant but threatening. Warbirds look smoothed out like their namesake, a bird of prey swooping in to murder something. And when we see the Scimitar, which is just mwah, such an excellent ship as a Romulan superweapon of sorts, its aesthetics still fit what we would expect. It's angular and angry, yeah, sure, but it looks like it was built for and is ready to beat your ass. The Scimitar also has like this ridiculous double TF spider mode, but it's not permanently looking like that, so you know, it, that's the superweapon button, we can ignore it. The Narada is a slap in the face to everything it means to be Romulan and every design convention they've ever had. It's such a wonderfully iconic design. They are amazing as antagonists. Every time we see them in other Star Trek properties, they are such elegant, suave, arrogant assholes. It's just so much fun. Because like I've been rambling on about, a huge part of what gives ships their iconic visage isn't just what they look like. It's how well they stick to the feel and personality and distinctiveness of their faction. The Star Destroyer from, well, Star Wars, is so good at this. It's an imposing brick of guns made from angular, aggressive shapes with no soul serving an empire of essentially space Yahtzees. Like, it's great. It's the perfect representation of a ridiculously overblown wonder weapon that is meant to ruin everything nice in the universe. And the third point that we're going to go over in the design that the Narada, frankly, doesn't just fail, it shits the bed. And that's looking like what it was designed to do. I want to be clear, okay? Sometimes designing your warship to look like a pleasure yacht or church can be cool and make a really good juxtaposition or statement on the faction that built it. Look at the Imperium of Man. Their spaceships are half warship and half holy handjob to the Emperor. The characters even treat it seriously because it's like an inside joke. This is stupid. This is really, really dumb. It doesn't need to be like this. It's a waste of time and materials and there are better ways to build your ships. And that's the punchline. That's the point. It's one of the greatest ship designs because it breaks all the rules in the right way. Imperial ships also tend to be made of a few big, simple, blocky sections that are easy to identify, so they're never usually that hard to really parse visually. All of the greebly bits tend to be relatively insignificant, so they also show restraint where the Narada doesn't to be a little more visually easy on the eyes. But, for the most part, ships should look like what they're supposed to be doing and what people say that they're supposed to do. You don't make a ship utterly hedgehogged with guns and missiles, then tell me it's a civilian mining ship with light anti-piracy weapons. Like, no, shut up. This is why I love The Expanse and Battlestar Galactica so much. Every ship looks like it was built to do what it says it does. 
The Canterbury from the Expanse is a massive ice hauler, bringing vital crunchy water supplies to the stations that need it to keep people from dying. It has one purpose, so what does it look like? It's a giant garbage can! One massive bucket to fill with ice strapped to the front of a colossal engine assembly to get it moving, and crew quarters and habitation modules bolted on in between. It's absolutely fantastic design. Who on God's green earth, however, would look at the Narada and go, oh yeah, mm, mm hmm yeah, that's, that's a mining vessel. I'm sorry, what? What is it mining, salt from my tears of nerd rage? It looks nothing like a mining vessel of any kind, and a huge part of good design is making the ship look and feel like it has a purpose. The hand of the writer isn't just a convention for books where someone deus ex machina is a character out of a hole that they wrote them into. It also applies to any creative project where story or purpose or intent is important. If the Narada was a random standalone ship with no lore or backstory made by a concept artist or something, then I would still consider it to be a kind of bad ship but not terrible. With all said background and lore, it feels like the visuals and dialogue around the Narada are constantly fighting one another. Overall, to sum up, the design and appearance of this ship is just so bad. I just, I hate it, everything about it. I genuinely would rather prefer if we saw actual Romulan warbirds. That would have been so much more entertaining to have some secret Romulan stealth operation that the characters would have had to plan or explore the way around, but no, we get this weird garbage. And now, from a uh, turbo nerd perspective to end off the video and a little quicker, I am going to list off a bunch of stuff that I absolutely hate about the specific design of the Narada. First, the spikes. Why? What could these possibly provide to the ship? If people are living or working along these things, then it's a massive investment of life support and resources to keep them protected and alive in what amounts to a massive bad dragon statue. We see weapons being fired from the spikes, which some may say is their purpose to be weapons platforms by, you know, adding a bunch of missile or torpedo tubes, but why would you build the munitions launchers so far out randomly from the core of the ship? You would either need to build colossal railway networks inside the ship to transfer the actual munitions to reload these things, or you would need to constantly keep beaming new missiles into the launchers, teleporting them as you need them. And if you're going to teleport the missiles anyways, why not just arm them, activate them, beam them out into space, and fire them like that? The mining drill! Oh, god, the mining drill. They're just... Oh, I am calm. Why is this even a thing? Once again, we live in a society, or Star Trek lives in a society, where you can teleport things whenever and wherever you want. What need do we have for a colossal mining laser? One where, need I remind you, the laser is so powerful, it can vaporize a hole directly to the core of a planet. This thing alone invalidates the idea of mining. Miners don't vaporize what they're looking to get. They break stuff up, sift things out, and ship off the material they want in smaller amounts, compacted in a big transport. That's what the point is. Also, why in the name of God would you ever build a mining ship that has this random tentacle laser capable of drilling to the center of a planet? Who in the hell made the interior of this ship? OSHA violation, OSHA violation, OSHA violation. Shut this industrial ship down. Worker safety violations haven't been this bad since I inspected a Tesla factory. Like just, what is, why? Why? Did the Romulans decide, fuck it, we're living inside an MC Escher painting now? I don't understand. There's also this part where we can see this green-hued curving path, suggesting that it's one of the spikes, meaning the entire ship is hollow. One colossal compartment, one blowout or explosion, and the entire thing decompresses. There are even like so many comics and short stories trying to explain what this failure of a ship is, but as far as I'm concerned, if you need to write a novel to justify your stupid design, just throw it out and start again. There's no fixing this. Put it out of its misery. Someone dragged the Narada out back and old yeller her before burying it in an unmarked grave. It's best for us all. But, of course, this is just my opinion, and the thoughts of one angry nerd on the internet are not to be taken too seriously. So let me know what you think. Am I on base or hopelessly out of touch with my assertions about the Narada being the worst ship ever put to screen? Maybe you have an even dumber ship out there, or something even worse I don't know about, and are just dying to rage at your own most hated design in sci-fi. Whatever it is, let me know down below. And with that, we're done.
But first, a thanks to size patrons. David G, Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, The Other One, Silencer, and of course, Vox Apollyon. Thank you all very much. And to my loyal patrons, pay attention to the Patreon, please. There's going to be a message about what video is going to be made next weekend. You guys are going to have some input on which topic I talk about that day. So, with that being said, outros are hard. I hope you've all had a wonderful day. Goodbye!